A credit card is a legitimate source of business financing in a pinch. It can be a viable option if you have a high credit limit, a reasonable interest rate, and if the card offers you rewards when you use it. I've heard of more than one startup using credit cards to get their design businesses off the ground. But in architecture, there's more than one way to use a credit card. If you still have an old school credit card, it's embossed. And why are the letters and numbers raised? Before the turn of the century, about the time many of you were born, electronic banking wasn't a thing yet. Before that, merchants used a manual credit card imprinting device called a zip zap. Some called it a knuckle buster. But here's the thing, when using a credit card as a straight edge, the embossing keeps it up off the paper so that the ink from the pen doesn't want to seep underneath. Yes, it's a small straight edge, but since scanning was invented, so are my sketches. The scans fill up the screen at the other end, no matter what scale it is, right? Thirdly, did you know that credit cards are a golden rectangle? Standard size credit cards are 54 millimeters by 86 millimeters, creating a ratio of 0.628, less than a millimeter from the perfect golden section of 0.618. Also known as phi, it's a ratio repeatedly found throughout art, architecture, and nature. If you ever need an easily accessible example of a golden rectangle, all you need to do is pull out a MasterCard. But here's the discovery that blew my mind. The MasterCard logo is a Vesica Pisces. The Vesica Pisces is a mathematical shape formed by the intersection of two circles with the same radius on the same line. The center of each circle intersects with the perimeter of the other along a horizontal line. Vesica Pisces literally means bladder of a fish, which it gets from its shape. Within the Vesica Pisces, you will find the square root of 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. You'll also find two special right triangles, a 30-60-90 and a 45-45-90. But also you find phi. Quite a discovery, wouldn't you say? How does this information apply to architecture? There are three Gothic style arches created using the Vesica Pisces and several derivatives from those three. All of them are referred to as pointed arches. The most common is the equilateral arch, a pointed arch having two centers and a radii equal to the span. More simply put, it's the upper half of the Vesica Pisces. The Tudor arch is a four-centered arch with an inner pair of curves, each with a radius much greater than the outer pair. Using the Vesica Pisces, you create a rectangle made of the two squares to set each of the origination points for the radii. If you want to get really fancy, design an OG arch. It's a pointed arch with double curve hunches. Other arches that derive from these are the lancet arch, the drop arch, and the surbased arch. Gothic architecture was prevalent in Europe from the late 12th to 16th century. It's not often, but we still see it today. For example, here's a winner of a Grand Arda by Dixon Projects and MHS Architects. It's a beautifully done adaptive reuse into luxury rentals. Please go back to the email that brought you here so you can check out everything that's going on in AIBD. Thanks for watching this entire video and have a triumphant week.